Hey everybody, welcome back to Bitosop channel and to the another episode of PS Query. In this episode, we are going to study about how to perform aggregation on multiple rows of data to combine it into a single row or in other words, how to concatenate the values coming from multiple rows into a single string. So to explain the concept, let's take this example of this report. So this is a PS query report in which we have included the PO header record. We have taken the couple of key fields from this uh, table and then we have in also included its child record which is nothing but the PO line table and we have included item ID from this line table. Now when we run the report, the report is running as expected. However, there is one key point here. If you see, there are certain PO transactions for which we are having multiple rows of data in the report. And why this is happening is because of the item ID. Since we have four different items for this particular PO transactions, we are getting four rows for the same PO transaction in the report. Now imagine a scenario where you have a really complex report and your client basically needs that, you know, you just need to have one row of data per PO transaction. And they also need to include the item ID in that one single row itself. So is there any way where we can just have this one row of pure transactions and combine all of its four items into a single row? Well, fortunately, there is a way. Let me show you another report for the same uh, PO header and line table. So when we run this report, you can see for each PO, for the same PO that we were checking here, we just have one row of data and all of its item has been concatenated in a single row. Well, that's what we are going to study today, how to perform this. And this is possible with the help of a Oracle SQL function called list aggregate. All right, so without further delay, let's get started. So in order to achieve the aggregation of multiple rows, we will use this function called list aggregation, which is provided by Oracle SQL. So one quick thing to note is that if your people's of system is using some other database other than SQL Oracle, such as IBM DB2 or Microsoft Access, then I request you to check the documentation for your database in order to find a function which meets this functionality this is because in this case, this function might not work in your database. So let's understand this function. So this is a list aggregation function provided by Oracle. And we have to provide certain parameters. The first one is the field name on which we have to perform the aggregation. In our case, it's going to be the item ID field which is coming from B record. So we have included B dot item ID. And the second one is the delimiter. That means when you are having two or more item ID, how do you want to separate them? In this case, if you check the second report, each item ID has been separated by a comma. That is because we have included comma as a delimiter. So you can pick any special character you like to separate the items. So once you have performed the list aggregation, the second part is that within this aggregation or within this group, order the values coming by this item ID. So if you see here, the values are in a particular sequence. These are in a particular order because these are following this order by criteria. And here also we have given the same item because that's what we want to do. We want to order the items in increasing order. So 
that's how your function is going to be. So what we will do next is let's copy this entire function, go to your report, click on expression, click on add expression and then paste the content here. Make sure you do not miss any comma or any bracket otherwise this may throw syntax error. Now the expression type should be long character. This is because we don't know what is going to be the length of this expression. It can be just length 6 like this one or it can be length maybe 200 for transactions having lots of data like this. Hence make sure you select the expression type as long character and since we are using this function which is an aggregate function please make sure that you select this checkbox called identity function. This is the way to let the PS query know that we are using an aggregate function and not just a plain text. So click on OK, click on use as field to include this in our output report and click on run. So now if you see the report, it's still working like the old report we had it did not perform any aggregation. Why? Because we still have this item ID column which is generating one row of item in the report. So that is the reason we are no longer able to aggregate because we still have this column, right? So in order to make the aggregation happen, we need to remove this column from our PS query because until we have this column, we will still get one item per row in your report. So we will go to fields and we will remove the item ID from your report. And now if we run that, we can see that the report is now working as expected and our expression has successfully performed aggregation on the items. So such kind of tricks are often useful whenever we have a special requirement like this where no matter we have how many entries in the child record, we just need one row for the entire transaction. So I hope this video was helpful to you in creating some of the best reports for your journey. And if you find this video helpful, then please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Thank you.